Oh, hi, everybody. It's Kim Winter, uh, Logistics Executive Group for our latest round of uh, interviews with uh, who's who in the executive world and supply chain and, and broader across uh, economies than that. And today, uh, I'm very pleased to welcome a guest from Singapore, Frederick Goma. Uh, bonjour, mon ami. Bonjour, Kim. Thanks, Kim, for having me. I'm very <laughs> pleased of hearing you speaking in French. I'll do, I'll do what I can. Um, <laughs> hey, Frederick, uh, welcome, uh, welcome aboard for the show today. And uh, you are the uh, Director General and everything else uh, other than what everybody else does over at B2G <laughs> in Singapore. Why don't you give us a bit of a heads up on, on your background and the background of B2G? Yes, I'm thinking I'm fixing problems for uh, my clients and for my team as well. But uh, to tell you a little bit uh, about my background, so I actually started my career like I would say most supply chain professionals of my generation, uh, which means I didn't choose supply chain. I wouldn't say that supply chain chose me, but I didn't choose supply chain. Uh, I just happened to land into a supply chain. So as a, um, a French industrial young engineer, I had the opportunity to work on a full, uh, or I would say fully automated warehouse uh, design project in France. That was something like 20 years ago. And it was uh, at that time, as you can imagine, uh, a, a premiere. And from that experience, I, I found myself, myself very much passionate about, uh, first of all, warehousing, then logistics, then, you know, after a couple of years, the, the domain logistics uh, was growing quite fast in, uh, in scope and evolved to what we, uh, we call now a supply chain, as we know it, which include procurement, manufacturing, distribution, uh, and which considers actually all the different aspects from the physical flow, uh, the information and the, the financial flow. So I actually started uh, with my partner 10 years ago. Um, a management consulting firm specializing in, uh, in supply chain to, I would say, solve problems that prevent business leaders uh, developing three main things. First, uh, strong, profitable, and sustainable organizations across the globe. So okay. we have uh, now offices in France, uh, in Bahrain for Middle East Africa, and here in Singapore for Asia. So we cover pretty much the, the globe. So why? Um, and I would say the reason is because we, um, we always have this underlying belief that there is um, a higher purpose and that, uh, you know, progress, wealth and happiness for people, societies, communities can be powered or if you, if you prefer, can be enabled by supply chains. Okay. So that people like you and me, Kim, actually can enjoy a more fulfilling life. That's why actually we created B2G. So that's beyond the uh, inventory optimization, distribution network or SNOP. Although this can definitely uh, help. So that's, uh, that's uh, the, the story behind B2G. Nice roundup. Thanks, uh, Frederick. Very, very complete and appreciate your uh your heads up on, on where BDGs come from um, and, and your, your own background as well. Like many of us, uh, you, you flopped into supply chain. It's something that's a little bit like uh, quicksand, really, isn't it? You get into it and uh, you can't get out of it. So you spend your life in it. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, it's um, <laughs> walking with a stone in your shoe um, and then you, you feel like it's not comfortable, but you, you continue to carry on. So that's a bit like supply chain. So you take the heat from uh, and it's like a buffer from from different um, departments. And the, the problems that we solve are uh, most of the case not really well understood by um, most people. So, um, yeah, it's uh, I would say it's not a. a really a, a great full uh, discipline or domain. Our, uh, however, intellectually, it's, um, it has been quite fulfilling for me. So, so you mentioned, uh, obviously, you're very strong in SNOP and, and border-based supply chain consulting in that part of the world, similar to uh, our business operations and not only APAC, but here as well. And uh, you talked about um, the areas that you, you specialize in. What, what are you seeing at the moment over this, uh, say, last six to nine months um, in terms of where the pressure points have come? Where have the main compliant, uh, the customer requirements come from, from your perspective? Have, have they been similar to what nine, 2019 was 
or have you found that the requirements from customers for your support have changed and what have the drivers been of those changes if so? Yes, I wouldn't call it, uh, that's a great question, Kim. I wouldn't call it um, a, a change, but more an acceleration. Um, so what we have uh, witnessed um, uh, recently, it's a growing interest for some specific topics. Um, one is on the capacity of organization to anticipate and plan their business. Um, COVID-19 uh, hit most businesses or all businesses and um, those organizations were not able to see it coming and to uh, manage it uh, correctly. So they, this gave, us, gave them the opportunity to look at how they, were, they could anticipate any uh, major changes, um, generally speaking, but specifically on, their, um, um, on, on the demand side. So the sales and operations planning process, the SNOP is definitely uh, an answer to that. So companies are looking at how they can either improve their current uh, SNOP process or to design and implement um, a, a much better planning capability. So that's the, the first aspect. The second would be on the distribution network um, optimization um, for several reasons. Uh, number one is to increase the product's availability and uh, reduce the fulfillment lead time. Uh, so it, it actually means making sure that the products are available and whenever they are not, that the lead time to fulfill the, uh, the order from the customer is as short as possible. And um, this has uh, actually been always on the, you know, on the, the desk of uh, the, the top management, but now there's more pressure to uh, review the current uh, network and, uh, and see how they can actually shorten the, um, at the circuit so that they can improve the, the service level. And also in terms of risk, um, it's quite important now to, to consider that when, um, again, uh, to go back to COVID, when you have suppliers in Asia, when you are actually operating in, in Europe or in the US, for example, uh, you may want to have a shorter uh, distribution uh, circuits to uh, mitigate the risk. So that's on the distribution part. Um, then, of course, the working capital and, and the cash flow um, has been have been uh, both of them a quite challenged uh, recently. So there's um, a lot of questions about, uh, of course, inventory optimization, but not only um, because this is where the, the the cash is trapped usually in uh, most organizations but also on how to shorten the, what we usually call the cash-to-cash -cash cycle time. So uh, to make sure that you can actually um, fasten or speed up the, 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 your cash flow. And this is, so we may think that it's purely financial, but actually it's not. Uh, if you are able to manufacture much faster your product, uh, you will be able to sell your products much faster and then cash uh, in also much faster. So uh, the speed of the operations actually helps a lot in terms of uh, uh, working capital optimization. Uh, digitalization, definitely. I'm not sure that I have to expand on that. Um, but I think the digitalization has been not just for the sake of having a, a digital operation. It, it was also to increase the end-to-end -end visibility and also gain in terms of efficiency, reducing any um, low value activities, automating as much as possible, but also bringing the intelligence into the system. So those um, aspects have been um, ranking quite high in the, in the interest of the, of the industry. And to finish, um, I would say it has been a, an opportunity to also review um, the new mo new models, new channels, new offering. Uh, some companies were stuck, basically not being able because the, for example, the supermarkets or the stores were were closed uh, during uh, uh, the circuit breaker during COVID nineteen, and they could not actually reach their customers. For those. Uh, we didn't develop the, the e-commerce capabilities, for example. So it's actually the right time for some organization to think on how they could actually reach their, the consumers uh, through um, B2B uh, approaches or D2C distribution to, to center or, or uh, business to consumer, where they were focusing mainly on B2B, for example. 
Uh, you may have noticed that the, for the travel industry, uh, which is completely down currently, some of the uh, luxury cosmetics brands, but not only the brands, generally speaking, uh, where uh, travel retail uh, was quite uh, an important contributor in their um, uh, profit margin and, and revenue, uh, couldn't really uh, cope with the, the decrease of, uh, of revenue. So that's where um, we've seen some of the companies looking at currently in terms of uh, uh, how to uh, revisit their, their supply chain. Sure. Yeah, thanks for that. And what, and what do you see moving forward over the, the first quarter of uh, 2021 as the big opportunity areas in the type of companies that you're dealing with? What are the, uh, what are the greenfield areas that companies are seeing to come out of this year? I think the, it, it's not uh, actually a matter of quarter. It's more a, a matter of, uh, of years uh, in reality. And where we could have uh, thought that, um, you know, it's the situation, it's not working, let's fix it quickly. Uh, it's actually not the case. The, the amplitude of the, of, of, the, of the challenge that COVID-19 posed uh, made uh, those organizations think of how they could actually review completely their models. And you can't, you know, just change your model in a, for a short-term period. So most of the... Uh, the, the discussions are more on the longer term, how to set up uh, the basics, the fundamentals um, in a different way. I'm not saying that they didn't have the basics or the fundamentals, but now it's time to, to revisit that and define something which is different, more adapted to the, uh, to the era that we are living in, uh, what I, I call the anytime, anywhere, anything, uh, the now era. So that's... Um, uh, actually, even in the B2B industrial environment, that's, this trend is coming more and more. So um, it's time uh, for the next quarter to step back and think of how to build uh, future capabilities. Yeah. And, all, and of the companies that you're dealing with, um, I presume, like most of us, uh, many organizations have had uh, a lot of their staff their executive teams working from home. Are you, are you picking up from when you're talking to clients, uh, customers in the market, uh, what their plans are of redeploying staff back into the office? Or do you, is there a trend to long-term keeping people as home as much as possible? What's the situation there for you guys, in particular in Singapore? What's the general feeling? Yes, let, let's see in the future what the future will, will bring. But I would say um, Singapore has a quite um, um, interesting position because it's a regional hub. So all the, the clients that we have here in Singapore would have um, at least a, a regional scope. And they used to travel um, all the time. It's very difficult to catch someone in Singapore um, itself. You have to, uh, uh, to meet someone, someone somewhere uh, in the region. So... Um, with the, 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 the current challenge, the, those managers realize that they actually don't have to travel so much to get things done. So they now learn how to you know, just uh, plug their, uh, their camera, their web camera, uh, and, and start a Zoom Teams or Google Meet uh, a call. And, um, and do a review uh, with their teams. And in the end, they, they, they get as much done, if not, uh, if not more. So I think this will continue. And um, um, the way we were using um, the time, again, personally, I was traveling a lot. So uh, my time was, uh, was spent a lot traveling. And um, I actually love traveling and working while I'm traveling in, in the airplane, for example. So I make use, I used to make use of, of this time, but um, it's not the case for, for, for everyone. So um, I think we'll, uh, we'll evolve in terms of the, the future of work in the sense that we won't need to, to meet physically in a place to get the work done. Then this may pose other challenges in terms of how do you make sure that the corporate culture is still um, sustained when people meet um, together or mingle together less. And this may create... Um, uh, venues or avenues where you could uh, actually create a culture. I wouldn't say outside of, of the company, but I, I would 
at least outside of the four walls of the company, which means for the HR department, it will be an interesting time to see how they can still uh, maintain the glue of the organization while uh, people uh, may not uh, uh, be physically present in, uh, in, uh, in, in the same office. Yeah, interesting. I mean, and have you found yourself uh, in terms of your client engagement? Um, I mean, many companies obviously saw a bit of a drop off of business from uh, February, uh, March when COVID first hit and uh, and flattened things out. I, I presume that was uh, similar for you guys, but uh, things have certainly ticked up. And have you found, uh, well, is, if the, is that the case for you? And uh, the second part of the question is, how have you found the, the, the communication via Zoom? I mean, and by, by Teams and, and WebEx. Uh, is that, has that been a positive or a negative for your business? Um, that's an interesting question. Um, it was, um, first of all, in February, March, at the, the peak of the, of the crisis uh, or the first wave, uh, we were really puzzled uh, because the discussions we had were all uh, paused um, and most of our clients were really focused into how they could uh, uh, manage the crisis, uh, how to, to serve their customers, how to uh, assess the remaining supplier base who could uh, provide which products, to which factory, which distribution reach distribution center, et cetera, et cetera. So that was really challenging for them and they were in a, uh, in a firefighting mode. So we actually find some opportunities with our clients to support them during this, uh, this tough uh, period. Uh, as we do um, also, and that's a particularity of uh, what we do, we also do a, a lot of turnaround uh, support for, for some of our clients. So uh, being in a crisis um, uh, situation is something that we, um, uh, we, we, we like and we help our, cli our clients, in fact. So that was, uh, but that was for a, a minority in terms of a number of, uh, of clients. So we're a bit puzzled on the, what would be uh, the, the situation for the coming months. And uh, I would say after March, uh, the discussions that we had previously came back into the picture. We had um, a lot of um, requests, additional and new requests uh, coming from different uh, places because um, one of the, I would say, um, interesting aspects is that supply chain has been uh, put in the forefront of uh, any discussions in uh, mainstream media and um, companies, organizations realize that they really need to start to do something on the uh, on, on their supply chain. So we actually, we're actually uh, starting from March, we were actually very busy. And that's probably one of the busiest period uh, since we, we started the, um, uh, our consulting firm actually. So it has been uh, on this aspect quite, uh, quite interesting. And uh, for the second um, question, uh, now we do 100% of our assignments, engagement virtually. So if you ask me what I prefer, I really prefer to be physically with my clients, engaging. Uh, there's a lot that you can learn at the coffee machine. Uh, you know, being French, uh, that's an important uh, spot to have some insights. Uh, and that's uh, when we do an improvement. It's important to also um, uh, start to feel the culture and uh, how people interact with each other, which are not really... Uh, uh, documented on, uh, on, on papers. So that's, that's important also to, uh, to have uh, this kind of face-to-face uh, -face connection. Um, doesn't change much in terms of um, either the size of the complexity of the projects that we are dealing virtually. It works well. The only aspect is, I would say, the, uh, the, the interaction that we have. Uh, definitely, you can't do uh, three days a uh, three-day workshop uh, with people, people on, um, on, on virtually engage uh, on Zoom. So we, we reinvented the way to engage with, with our clients uh, by having a shorter sessions and uh, also making sure that we could interact, having some, uh, some games and social um, uh, periods during those, uh, those Zoom uh, uh, or uh, Teams uh, calls. So that's also interesting. That's, that's different. So we, we adapt. <laughs> we just adapt it. Sure. Well, thanks for sharing the insights and experiences. I mean, we'd like to ask our guests 
how they, how they've gone in various areas, and so everybody can understand what the various uh, experiences are and, uh, and examples of how the various cases have worked. Um, look, I, I appreciate your time today. I always like to uh, ask, uh, I guess, a couple of quick fire questions as we wrap up our sessions. And uh, one of them is, uh, I know your organisation, of course, is a global organisation, you have a lot of, uh, like us, you have people coming and going in your organisation uh, every year. What, if you're looking at characteristics of people to join your organisation, what are the two or three things that you look at in terms of capability or personality or characteristics that you're really looking to identify that you think will help their success in your business? Okay, um, th that's a great question because that's the, the type of question that we are asking ourselves when we recruit. So that's a, a, an important uh, step. So I would say, first of all, it's, it's quite challenging to be a consultant for many reasons. So beyond, beyond I would say, the minimum requirements uh, of um, any, that any consultant should meet, uh, you know, on the analytical, but also on the communication skills and the, also the work ethic. I would say um, curiosity, um, being a perpetual learner, um, meaning that you should always be learning every day. Uh, basically, you should be uh, learning something new and applying what you are learning in, uh, in your day-to-day -day work. Uh, second would be, uh, we like to use that, term, <laughs> that expression at B2G, which is uh, uh, he or she should eat what she or he cooks. So... It means being um, accountable for what we do. You know, consult as consultants, we are very much on the implementation side of the of the spectrum. So we actually help our clients to implement our recommendations. So we like to say that we we eat what we cook in the sense that we won't make any recommendations that we we won't be able to implement. And that's uh, something that which is um, for me very important at any level. Making sure that the um, any any B two G staff is or she, uh, accountable for uh, what uh, he or she does uh, actually, and deliver the maximum value that uh, uh, that he or she can. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, I would say the two uh, two top um, skills that I would uh, uh, look for. And if I had to use a third one, although you said only two. Uh, I would say ultra uh, competitive. That's something that uh, uh, you don't need to be ultra competitive, but that's a, a plus in our, in our organization. Okay, good, good stuff. Thank you. Um, the other thing I like to round up with is uh, tips that you've got. I mean, we've all had a pretty tough year in one way or another. It's uh, And things are still carrying on. We, vaccines are starting to fly around the world and uh, we're hearing a lot in the media and seeing a lot within the supply chain. Supply chains are gearing up and uh, the distribution and execution of, uh, of uh, vaccine uh, around the world. Uh, from your perspective, 2021, new year, a lot of people, including Time Magazine, want to leave 2020 behind to see on the cover yesterday. Um, but seriously, 2021, what does it hold? What, what are your tips for business leaders, uh, say two or three tips, business leaders, business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, people with startups, what are, what are some of the key things that you think as a consultant that leaders in any shape or form should be focused on moving forward to, to make sure they maximize uh, 2021? So uh, that, that's uh, really a great, great question, Kim. Thanks for asking. I think for 2021, I'm not sure how normal the, the new normal will be. So I would suggest to leaders, generally speaking, to actually embrace the change. We can't deny 2020. We can't uh, skip it. We can't uh, pretend it did not exist. Uh, we can't fight it. <laughs> so I would suggest to adapt uh, and adapt fast. It doesn't mean that you necessarily need to reinvent completely everything that you've been doing up to now. It may mean um, to, to change a few aspects which uh, are not working anymore and not to be uh, too romantic about, uh, about it. Um, seeking new opportunities. Uh, again, it doesn't mean to change completely what, what you were doing, but finding new ways of... Uh, uh, of uh, creating uh, new streams of revenues, for, for example, uh, which could be 
both within your industry, but also outside of your own industry. And then accelerate, <laughs> go full on. Because currently the, the cards of the game uh, are being redistributed. So that's um, actually the way I see it. Uh, 2020 was has been because we're, we're still in 2020 um, challenging year, but yet uh, very interesting in terms of opportunity. Uh, if you if you could uh, actually adapt to the to, to the change. Awesome. Hey, uh, really appreciate you spending the time, uh, and also congratulations to yourself and Jay and the rest of your crew for putting on a very successful woman in supply chain. Uh, event during the year, which we're happy to support and collaborate with you on and uh, promote in the media. Um, I'm sure that was very successful for you. Any final words uh, to, to the uh, people that collaborated and participated in that event? Uh, yes, so we are preparing for 2021, the Global Women Supply Chain Leaders Award. So we are looking for uh, more nominees, so the, we will communicate soon. And uh, I wanted to say also, Kim, that we are extremely pleased uh, of having you as a, a media sponsor for, uh, for this uh, great event. So yeah. thanks a lot. No, look, our absolute pleasure and uh, we appreciate what you're doing in the industry. Um, look, thanks for the time again today. I hope uh, our audience has gained some insight and some value from uh, your contribution and the things we discussed today. Um, to everybody uh, who's been in the audience today, Thank you for your time. Uh, again, a shout out to all of those on the front line, keeping us safe and still fighting the good fight um, with the pandemic. Um, especially a, a shout out to those who have struggled over the, over the last year. As a community, as a supply chain community, uh, I encourage everybody to support those around you, uh, leaders and your teams, reach out. There's been a lot of carnage and damage in terms of mental health over the last 12 months. Um, so, so be aware, be empathetic, show leadership, uh, pe treat people individually, reach out and support them. Um, Frederick, I know you guys have got a lot to do with the community. Uh, merci, mon ami. Uh, appreciate merci your beaucoup. contribution today. And uh, we look forward to catching up with you again soon in Singapore. Thanks so much, Kim. Good to see you. All the best. Thank, thanks, Frederick. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.